What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new video on my channel, so in this video, I'm doing episode 1 of my brand new series on PES 2020 career mode, and that is with Arsenal, I mean, what am I doing right here, this club, is it even saveable, I'm not too sure, we're gonna have to find out, and uh, in this episode guys, I've literally played like 20 games already, so you're gonna get a lot of content in this one, uh, which is gonna be great, and uh, yeah, if you guys wanna see a part 2, uh, remember to show amazing support, and that will happen uh, within the next few days, anyway, we're starting off right here, as you guys can see, I chose some Maradona as the character you cannot make your own guy anymore uh, which is too bad so yeah I went for Maradona uh, we can see him in all the cartoons right now but just imagine that that is me I look like that I'm obviously gonna be in charge of every single decision I'm gonna be running this club uh, and hopefully we do not get the fired after just a few days um, so that would, uh, that would already be like a positive if that doesn't happen but we're meeting up right now with some of the players we see uh, you know like I said there about Myung and this is Saka as well a uh, very promising youngster so we're just uh, walking around at the training area just uh, you know getting introduced to the club and what is going to be the new workplace and he's already talking about his tactics and uh, the way that I want to play football so it is uh, very exciting indeed and now it is time to set some objectives objectives for the season and uh, yeah we have to be realistic here you know the sports director is probably gonna say something now I like to discuss this season objectives let's see what he says as a sports director I think we should be aiming to win the league this year what's your opinion okay I mean I'm all for high hopes and uh, you know setting goals but let's be realistic for a second right here we're gonna be very happy if we can make it into the Champions League uh, this season I mean we've, we've not done well uh, the last few seasons and obviously this is my first uh, year as a manager uh, for Arsenal so I mean uh, winning the league is a bit of a reach I think but I'd be happy with a Champions League play so hopefully they agree with me on that one I guess aesthetic plan might work better all right you have my backing that is great to hear he doesn't look too happy though that <laughs> that I wasn't as ambitious as him uh, and as you guys can see they all support the decision which is great so now it's just time to get down to business some of you might be wondering why did I choose the Arsenal as a club to take over well basically first of all they have their stadium in the game which is a huge positive for me uh, they basically have to have their stadium in the game or it is basically impossible to do a career mode so that is the reason I haven't done one with Liverpool this year on PES as well uh, because they do not have their stadium anymore on the game and uh, the second is basically just to have a big challenge because yeah, obviously if we took over a top team, it would be fun a couple of uh, seasons But I mean it is not really something to work towards You know, it's always the same objectives win the league win the Champions League with this It's gonna be a bit of a challenge. You never know how every single game is gonna go here um, So it's gonna be very interesting and um, a brand new experience uh, to take over this club What style of football do you want to play this season? I'm getting some questions here and I'm just gonna say that I want to see the boys play hard much better I want to see more passion than we've seen previously. Uh, I want to see the boys to play for the badge that is the most important thing and uh, yeah it's a, it's a battle out there and there's no place for players who aren't ready to lay it all on the line and play their hearts out so I'm liking that I'm being a brutally honest there in the press conference obviously we need a few managers like that who just assess it straight out and that is how I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very honest uh, when I get asked questions but that is the end of our press conference after that we had to do a interview with the club TV but that is no problem we took a look at the squad right after that and this is how it looked like uh, from the last time somebody was in charge and it's a mess to be honest I had to change it up of course Martinelli, Bamyang, Pepe in front, uh, Kolasinac, David Luiz, Socrates, Hector Bellerin and Grandusi and Torreira and of course Ursil as the number 10 and Leno in goal that is how it's looking I took a look at the club ranking list and as you guys can see we are number 9 which was pretty surprising over the likes of United, Napoli, Dortmund so um, yeah did not expect to be number 9 in that list so I think it's only gonna be downhill from here I'm not too sure uh, but I think the only way we can like improve that is if we get like maybe a top four or maybe win the Champions League or something we might be able to get the further up but I think uh, ninth is already a uh, place we should be happy with but uh, it would be great to even improve on that uh, anyway we are uh, starting off the preseason right now first game is gonna be against Manchester United there's gonna be three games uh, first game against United next game against the Bayern and then against the Juventus I believe and the team that has the most points after three games uh, is the team that's gonna win this preseason so uh, that is how it works. Uh, Colossal not share. We get a very cheap a free kick. Didn't really look like much, but uh, uh, we'll take it. This is a range for Nicolas Pepe, and he is going to actually score that first free kick. 
uh, in this uh, career mode and uh, Pepe is there so he's gonna be our free kick taker uh, Ozil also has of course insane free kicks but uh, after this uh, one here from Pepe he's just gonna keep taking them no chance for the Gaia and uh, yeah 1-0 is how that game ended nothing much really happened after that uh, but he is pretty annoyed there against uh, I think it was Lindelof for something Phil Jones it was um, and yeah you can you can understand why but uh, here we go we are number two in the group at the moment with three points uh, Bayern München also lost to Juventus in their first game so we have a barn coming up now in the second one and uh, they have a, a strong lineup as well Lewandowski uh, Thiago Coleman Perisic uh, yeah they pretty much went with their strongest squad unless uh, yeah they didn't go with Neuren goal though um, so I'm not too sure why but uh, let's see how this one goes so Pepe on the ball at the moment and a bad tackle from Kimmich very very physical game and uh, a lot of tackles and um, yeah fouls being made uh, nice free kick attempt there though from uh, David Luiz one day I'm gonna score like a long range free kick uh, David Luiz is gonna take all of them because he has insane and knockable movement so he's gonna be the uh, long free kick taker and maybe we'll score one in the series sometime amazing run here though by Pepe you better go straight at the goalkeeper uh, bad finish but uh, great uh, from Pepe Pepe has been uh, by far our best player so far in the preseason and Martinelli there as well with a nice chance uh, pass from Ozil but uh, he cannot score and the game ends as a draw not uh, not the most exciting game to be honest we had a couple of chances but I uh, wasn't able to uh, take them so yeah it ends as a draw uh, one point to each team reaction number one in the group now United did beat Juventus as well so uh, we are number one with four points going into the last one and as you guys can see here we have the trophy on display as well and I mean it would be nice to pick up a trophy even though it's a preseason uh, tournament it would still be nice to win uh, against all of these great teams and uh, come out on top so uh, we probably have our most difficult challenge yet here with the uh, Juventus that squad looks unbelievable and they obviously have Ronaldo. Bad defending here, but Kolasinac loses out. And Ronaldo almost there scores a goal. And Leno has every right to be frustrated with our defending there. Absolutely not good enough. Reese Nelson now, though, to Pepe with a nice through ball here towards Aubameyang. Who can run towards the keeper. He's got a lot of pace. But shoots it straight at the goalkeeper. But that was actually enough. The game ends as a draw. No goals for each team. But we somehow managed to win the preseason tournament. With two draws and one win. We have won it on five points. And uh, yeah, the players are uh, going around thanking the fans, you know. Uh, we're happy with that one as well. Nice to see a bit of a silver bit already at the club. I mean, I think we haven't even lifted a trophy. We haven't touched the trophy in years. Uh, but, you know, even though it's a preseason trophy, I mean, we are kind of overdoing the celebrations right here. Like, we have won the World Cup or something. It's it's a bit shameful. But uh, still, it is it is maybe a sign of things to come. You never know. Uh, ben Tucker there with the man of the match, though. Uh, we didn't play a good game at all. But somehow, uh, we, we just got very lucky. This is down to pure luck. Uh, we probably didn't deserve to win the tournament, but yeah, we did submit five points and uh, that is uh, not too bad, I guess. Um, so now it is time to get to prepared for the uh, season to begin. Uh, Reese Nelson here uh, did get a few minutes in the Champions Cup, so uh, we'll be giving him uh, probably a few minutes this season. Uh, he also did a club into here um, talking about that he wants to play a lot. So yeah, he's uh, he's going to get a few minutes this, year, this season. He's going to get his chances and hopefully he'll just get uh, better and better for us. There we go. There's the preseason tournament in the trophy cabinet. Hopefully we'll add some better trophies to that list eventually. And in PES as well, you have so many things you can do. I changed the competition price to straight into the transfer budget. Um, so every single uh, game of winning competitions and prizes we get, uh, that's going to go straight towards that. Uh, here we can see the overview of the sponsorship income. We can see all of the, um, you know, uh, club account balance here, broadcasting rights, gate receipts, everything. Um, so I like the overview that we have right here. Very good control of uh, basically everything. We are in charge of everything and can decide a lot of things. So that is nice. Uh, we're actually going to play Champions League uh, playoffs. I mean, I didn't expect that. So um, I don't know why we are in the playoffs because obviously last season Arsenal did not finish uh, as a top four uh, team. So uh, this came as a bit of a surprise and uh, yeah, we're actually going to have a chance at the Champions League football this the first season. So uh, that is very interesting. Um, so here we go in the first the playoff game uh, against the uh, Pauk away so a difficult place to go but uh, I changed the, the squad up not too much I went for the uh, probably the strongest lineup and there we go Pepe after 10 minutes with the first goal as well and uh, nice goal by 
him and yeah he's the only one that scored for us so far so uh, thankfully we have Pepe and he's starting out to be our best player so uh, very nice run here and uh, yeah he's so quick as well and uh, absolutely smashes that in so that's a 1-0 uh, we get a free kick here from the halfway line and because it's Luis we try to go for the shot and somehow we have uh, managed to get a corner kick from literally the halfway line questionable goal kicking uh, goalkeeping there but um, uh, yeah we have to get, try our chances one day that is going to surely go in 67 minutes there though and uh, Pau gets a, a nice chance they shoot and it's uh, gone in off the post and in and Leno has uh, no chance uh, pretty uh, poor defending as well from us right there and uh, Pau has uh, equalized which means that uh, this could be uh, become very interesting now um, you know obviously it, it's it's one point from this game anything can happen at the Emirates um, so yeah it's definitely all to play for and uh, Pau is probably they look disappointed but they should be happy with that uh, they didn't have really that many chances and they scored the one that they got so yeah fair play to them Liverpool has assigned the Bernardo Silva as well they are just getting stronger and stronger uh, Marcial has gone to Spain he's joined up with Barcelona uh, Milik has also gone to Liverpool Sabitzer to Spurs uh, Lucas Vasquez to Bayern and the Liverpool has literally signed so many players looks like they are spending uh, the Champions League money from last season because yeah they're signing everybody um, so they are strengthening their squad as well our first game of the season is coming up it's gonna be home against Leicester in the league and we really want the three points to kick your things off but Leicester is a difficult team as well we got some questions right here how are you feeling going into your first match I certainly want to walk away uh, from the game with a win we know we have the ability to beat Leicester and we are ready to take them on so here we go preseason is over it is now down to business this is where it all begins the league is here and uh, we are now in the dressing room giving some instructions and just giving those uh, players a bit of boost as well going into this one it's our first time appearing before the home crowd this season so whatever you do make this match a worthy of the fans and remember make them play at our pace so I'm very uh, direct here with what I want to say and the players now is about to walk out to the pitch and uh, say hello to the home fans and everybody on the stadium welcome to the Emirates and the first game of the season in the league against the Leicester I'm going for a very strong lineup uh, the, the strongest I have and uh, Martin Lenny as well will get another chance from start even though he has to miss quite a few chances uh, for us uh, he'll get another chance in this one Leicester though strong team as well Vardy looks like they're playing a 4-3-3 uh, yeah, sort of formation as well uh, which is expected so um, here we go Kolasinac on the left here uh, passes it to Martinelli back to Kolasinac nice uh, football crosses it into Aubameyang who tries a bicycle kick <laughs> that is uh, what Aubameyang does uh, Ersen now to Aubameyang and that is a free kick and that is Pepe range it could be maybe a bit too close here but it should go in let's see what Pepe does he hits the crossbar and very unlucky there for Pepe not to get the first Premier League goal of the season there uh, but here we go Pepe game nice turn and uh, almost goes in there for Schmeichel I think that would have gone in if it wasn't target but just outside David Lewis as well with a nice uh, free kick attempt right there uh, that one there as I said those will go in when do you see though he can go for the shot what a hit that is one way to start the season right there uh, that could be like the best goal I'm gonna score this season already I haven't really scored a goal like that on PES before and uh, just take a look at that rocket off a shot from Gunduz. he had a bit of space he got the ball uh, off and did he I think and uh, yeah he didn't really have anyone to pass to uh, but he has a shot on him and he just went for it and that is our uh, first goal of the season what a way to start the season right there um, so we are up 1-0 here is Leicester though, Tillemans, and what is that ball? That is the craziest ball I've ever seen from Tillemans. I didn't even look at that run and expect that at all. I didn't think he would go for it. And uh, Gwendouzi as well is absolutely shocked at what he has just seen. Uh, so am I. I mean, I cannot believe this. That is one of the greatest assists I've ever seen. Um, and I mean, I, ge I guess you just have to respect that goal. One of the filthiest assists I've seen. And that is definitely a goal of the year contender already. I think that has to be the better goal uh, in this match as well. That was probably better than the Gwendouzi shot, even though that was also great. James Madison there, though, with a jipping shot, hits the post. And that is how the game ends. Absolute roller coaster off the football match crazy game to start the season we obviously wanted to win but in the end I feel like the draw was the fair result when do you comes away as well with the man of the match 10.5 rating but let me know down below in the comment section which goal uh, do you guys think was better the Gwendoosi long shots 
uh, or it wasn't really a long shot, it was from like 16, 17 yards, uh, or was it the assist by Madis, I mean uh, Tillemans uh, to Chilwell, that was also an unbelievable goal, um, but that is the first game of the season, it's early though, so it's uh, one point, but it's... Uh, it's okay after that match, uh, the opening draw match against Leicester was no mean feat, the reaction of the press and the fans wasn't bad either, keep it up, so um, yeah, the press uh, reacted alright, we were actually pretty good in that game, uh, but obviously so was Leicester, so it's obviously early and uh, I'm sure we'll bounce back with uh, a better game next time. Uh, we all also got something here from the scout, which was pretty interesting, he he's found a couple of new uh, potential left wingers for us, um, you know, we have uh, Thomas Lemar here, of course, he almost joined Arsenal a couple years ago, so this is a bit of an interesting one uh, 24 years old and still lots of good potential so uh, I'll add him to the list there and obviously think about it because obviously uh, Martinelli hasn't really had his best to start yet to the season he's like 71 rated and he's still very very young we don't really have anybody there on the left I don't want to play a bombing on the left that is uh, a wasted position for him and like I said cannot really play on the left either so uh, uh, yeah we're gonna have to probably look for a, a good left winger uh, but W is a bit a long shot and of course that is going way wide and the 70 minutes now this is obviously a very important game as well we have to win this one we cannot uh, concede here that could be very dangerous we could lose the Champions League football uh, which we do not want here is Reese Nelson though with a nice ball to Pepe but he gets uh, headed out uh, Reese Nelson still on the ball passes it to Ursil who hits it and he goes in off the deflection I think that was and uh, he gives us a 1-0 lead in this important game qualify for the Champions League. Let's take a look at that one more time. Özil goes for the shot and yeah, it hits the Pauk defender so uh, very, very unlucky for him. It's by no means pretty but it ends up uh, giving us a spot in the Champions League which I'm very happy about so thank you so much Özil for that and uh, that could have ended way worse uh, because we almost had to go into extra time and things like that. But once again, we didn't really create anything in this game um, so thankfully Özil comes out there towards the end with a bit of a lucky goal and gives us Champions League football. Napoli also qualified, the same with Rangers, I'm very happy for Rangers and Steven Gerrard, 5-0 uh, there on two games uh, against the Basel, so uh, that is a great team to have in the Champions League for sure. Messi wins the Europe's Best Player of the Year award as well, he won by like 200, 300 votes there uh, over Ronaldo and Neymar, uh, third spot with 108 points, maybe in the future we'll see one of our players on that list, that would be amazing. Ronaldo as well has made an interview because he ended up in the group of death, we did not though, we ended up in a group which is uh, all right. We have Lokomotiv Moscow, we have Napoli and also Celtic. So I cannot wait already for that away game against Celtic. It's going to be a special to play uh, at Celtic Park in the Champions League night. So I'm looking forward to that already. But uh, it's a group that we should be very able to get out of. Of course, uh, it could have been much worse. So uh, in the end, I'm actually pretty happy about that group. But anything can happen in Champions League games. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Nice to run here though by Aubameyang. Skipped past a couple players and uh, shoots the ball. But the keeper makes a great save. Um, so that was a lovely run by Aubameyang. Uh, he picks up the ball here again, though, to Martinelli. Uh, not exactly a good pass, but Martinelli picks up the ball one-on-one -on -one against the keeper, and he slips over and messes up the shot. Martinelli really hasn't had a great start for us. He's not... Uh, scored any chances that he's got and he's had a lot of chances as well so that's not a good sign that's uh, why I'm looking for a potential replacement but Aubameyang is there um, to score this goal which is very important for us first away goal and uh, that is uh, very nice there although by Martinelli you have to give a credit to him even though uh, probably the uh, defender there Keen should have done a bit better uh, but nice the ball from uh, Martinelli so not too bad maybe uh, you know obviously he's still very young and he's just gonna keep improving but I think it is uh, a bit early to start him in every single game because he is indeed missing quite a few chances nice ball there though by Kolasinac uh, to switch up the play Ursa now on the ball with a beautiful ball to Aubameyang who hits it straight at their goalkeeper Hector Bellerin though now can cross it to Pepe and there he is and we get our second goal of the match. That was actually beautiful football right there. And it ends up uh, back of the net with Pepe on the header. Once again, another goal for Pepe. That is his uh, second goal. No, that is his first goal in the Premier League. But he's ha already had like three or four goals for us um, so far this season in all competitions. So... Uh, very nice football here, assist by Bellerin as well, 
and a very nice simple header for Pepe, he just stands there and then controls it in, so that is uh, nice to see by him. Uh, Everett now with the chance though, keen to reach Charlison, but Leno with an absolute world class save, uh, he's actually been amazing for us so far, Leno's been one of our best players, saved us a lot of points already, so very happy with that game, great performance, and we take our first three points of the season. We get the clean sheet as well, which makes the win even better, and Aubameyang gets the man of the match, 7.5 rating, and the same it did Pepe get, so very good performance, strong performance away against a very tough side, so uh, that is very positive signs for us. Uh, we also need to, of course, update some banners. Let me know down below in the comment section what I should write on the banners. They, it can be anything, guys. It can be uh, like a player banner, it can be uh, the banners about the owners, I'm not too sure. Anything, guys, let me know down below in the comment section what we should put on that. It can be even thinking about uh, anything about me as well um, so yeah let, let me know some good suggestions and I'll update that for the next episode so this is the transfer deadline day and uh, yeah we're prepared to get some offers here uh, for a couple of young players on the squad so I uh, will see what we do about those offers and of course I as well wanted to strengthen a bit and I felt like we need a new center back we need one more our center backs at the moment they're getting old and yeah we, we need one that can develop a lot and uh, can go straight into the team and uh, you know improve our defense just right away so I went with the carer after a lot of uh, you know just looking around the carer that did indeed end up being uh, the option that I went for you know decent price as well uh, good age on him and uh, yeah very experienced um, so I think that uh, hopefully we'll be able to get him over the line uh, in this transfer window uh, Bristol City asking to buy Bola for 500,000 um, so yeah we might absolutely let him go as well I, I don't think we're gonna uh, you know use this guy 63 rated um, you know 20 years old or something so so yeah, we're just gonna let him go, go to Bristol City, he's probably gonna have uh, more chance there of succeeding. But the PSG have responded to my offer to Carrier, and they have indeed accepted the offer. You might also notice that I had to put in like a release clause and stuff, because sometimes um, clubs are not gonna accept it unless you actually put in release clauses and things like that. So, and um, that is really weird, sometimes the negotiation system is not great. Uh, but we're gonna give him a new contract soon, so we get that the thing removed, uh, to make sure that nobody else uh, gets, uh, gets him up for like a nice price or something. Something. He's gonna be at the club for a long time and uh, yeah, as you guys can see he's made in use He's gonna get to the number four as well and we left it into the last minute But glad we got the things sorted. So he's gonna go straight in here uh, Socrates comes out Socrates is still gonna feature in many games, but uh, Kira takes his part for now I also looked at the youth Academy and this guy Harrington. He's only 20 years old uh, You know very good potential and he could become a very good in a few years time uh, could develop very fast as well So uh, I'm gonna sign him now for the the uh, first team and he's gonna be obviously on the reserves and stuff maybe sometimes gonna feature in like a small cup game or something but uh, yeah he looked uh, pretty good so uh, that is one first youngster uh, that we have promoted to the youth squad not gonna promote anymore at the moment but um, he obviously was the one that looked the most promising and can have a pretty big future the sporting director and everybody in charge of the club seems to be happy about our business as well in the transfer window we can see Martinelli is improving Torreira Ceballos there's so many players getting uh, you know better ratings and stuff every every single month so that is a very positive sign and that things are going well uh, we also had two players in the team of the month Pepe and Guendouzi uh, makes the team so this is a very good start to be honest and we're about to play our first game against Napoli but uh, yeah we did some good bit business in the transfer window obviously I, do, I don't want to make too many changes I don't want to sell too many players because these are still new to me and uh, you know I haven't really seen too much of them yet uh, one thing we might regret though is not bringing in a proper left winger uh, we have a still Martinelli, uh, so we might have to look towards that in the January window if Martinelli doesn't improve because uh, yeah, he's not really been too good for us so far, uh, missing a lot of chances, but he is still young and that's the reason we might need a more experienced left winger, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this is going to be the debut game though for Kerry straight into the Champions League game uh, here against Napoli, so that is a difficult game to get uh, his debut for us well, uh, but we'll see what happens. Nicolas Pepe here though uh, finds Martinelli, Aubameyang uh, tries to find Martinelli, but pass but a good pressing by Martinelli to win back the ball there for Pepe who's gonna go for the shot and that is a world class save by Carnesis could have been an amazing goal but have to respect that save and that is actually how the game ended nil nil not very entertaining at all that's all the chances that happened one thing and that was that shot 
Um, so very good, obviously, defensive game. That is a positive sign. Uh, Kero did, of, of, of course, really well. Uh, but uh, the three up front didn't really play at all. No, nothing going forward, basically. So, uh, yeah, kind of disappointing there. But uh, we'll take a point against Napoli. A draw is not too bad against uh, such a strong side. Next game is at home against Southampton in the league, though. And uh, 52 minutes have gone. Second half, Pepe is on the ball. Uh, tries to find Lacazette. Very nice touch there by Lacazette. And uh, the keeper comes out. He tries to chip him. And uh, that is not a very good finish, but like I said, he did everything correctly there first, but uh, yeah, the chip was not great, so I did indeed rotate a bit for this game. I tried to start with like I said, and Aubameyang, Aubameyang here though with a late chance in the game, and uh, he hits the post, which means that we're gonna get another draw, and this one I feel like we should have won. Um, so very disappointing performance, the fans will not be happy after that game, except maybe Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV, who's probably gonna cash out on some very nice reactions uh, from the fans, but uh, not good at all. Obviously, that is a game that we should win, and uh, not much really happened either. Um, so we have been really struggling to create things now the last few games, and um, yeah, as you guys can see, I've still got some tricks up my sleeve. Next game, though, it's not gonna be easy. It's, it's an away game against Manchester United. It is indeed showdown time at Old Trafford. And, uh, I mean, if we lose this one, then our start has actually been really, really bad. We have to take points in this game. We have to get at least a draw, and it's going to be difficult. United fans are pumped up for this one. Uh, the TFOs are out. I mean, just take a look at this. Absolutely crazy atmosphere. And um, the players are walking out. Looks like Bruno Fernandes is the captain of this game as well. Uh, the Gea is there. Maguire seems to be a very strong lineup. And uh, uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty intense. And they have uh, Van Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw, Pogba, Matic, Lingard plays though. So that is a bit of a relief uh, that they didn't start with the Greenwood or something. Um, so that is not too bad, but we have we know that Lingard has been good against the Arsenal before uh, A bombing here on the ball to Pepe a nice quick turn by Pepe Can he score a goal here? And yes, he can he gets a bit lucky there uh, But Pepe has scored against the Manchester United away at Old Trafford He does the celebration as well and what a start that is for us in this game a very very important start Maradona is happy and a nice there by a bombing, but it's all Pepe look at that turn He absolutely spins Maguire Wire has no chance keeping up with the Pepe right there. Um, so what a start for us. Really, really important. Uh, United those 61 minutes and they get a very cheap free kick once again. Matic whips it in. I think that is Rashford jumping over the ball. Uh, Bruno Fernandes in shooting position and I think that's deflected off David Luiz and it goes in. It is 1-1 after 63 minutes and Bruno Fernandes, of course it had to be him, uh, gets the goal. So, uh... Yeah, that is not good. Leno though tells the boys to keep going. That is cap material there from Leno. Nice to see that because we have been the better team here in this match. Um, but yeah, very, very lucky. I mean, things like that can happen. I'm not going to blame David Luiz there. He tried to block the shot, but obviously got very unlucky this time. As you guys can see, it suddenly started raining and snowing, which was uh, not really a surprise because we obviously are playing in England. So things like that can happen. But Aubameyang is here. Can he score the goal? Yes, he can. He hits the post, but it goes in. Uh, sort of a weird goal that with his left foot. I didn't even think uh, he'd be able to uh, get a shot off there, but he did. And Aubameyang uh, is now uh, on our way to three points there. The whole squad is uh, literally celebrating with him. Great run as well by Ursel, uh, who uh, eventually got the ball off there to Aubameyang. And yeah, poor defending by Lindelof there. He probably should have uh, been able to clear that or something, but Aubameyang... Uh, gets the goal against uh, United, which is probably the most uh, difficult game. Uh, certainly the most uh, difficult away game of the season. Uh, Kier on the ball now to uh, Bellerin. We're just gonna recall him here. Seal out these three points. Very important away win, uh, which we definitely needed. Uh, Pepe now to Aubameyang. And uh, can we get another goal here towards the end of the match? Yes, he can score his second of the match. De Gea has absolutely no chance. And Aubameyang has scored his second, which means that we are leading 3-1. And that means as well that we are going to win this game. Let's take a look at this one more time. A great ball there by Pepe. As well helped on there by the rain. It glided a bit further and it ended up being a perfect through ball there um, to Aubameyang. And he's obviously going to score that. He's so good in one-on-one -on -one positions. And uh, yeah, we get those three points. Uh, so yeah, we beat United, same as we did in the preseason. And Aubameyang, the man of the match rating with a 7.5. And I did not expect us to win 3-1. I didn't expect to score that many goals uh, against this uh, team, of course at this ground as well so that puts us now up to fifth place but the next game is against Liverpool so the games are coming thick and fast and it's not really getting any easier as well it is now Liverpool which is the 
of course, runners-up from last season, the Champions League winners. And uh, this is obviously going to be a tough challenge as well. A bombing here up against Van Dijk. Uh, Van Dijk tries to block it, but uh, we almost get the goal. They're off his left foot as well. Uh, that would have been some way to start off the match. Uh, they get a corner, Mo Salah there, headed off the line. Uh, that's not a player you expect to score headers and stuff, but oh, what is that goalkeeping? Uh, it looked like he was completely out of position right there, and Mo Salah uh, gets his check second chance, and he uh, converts that one. He almost scored, first of all, there with a header, uh, which was blocked off the line. But, I mean, what is Leno doing? I think that's his first mistake, and um, I, I think he has to take a bit of blame for that, because... The positioning did not look right whatsoever, um, so if he would have just stood in the middle then that would have been an easy save. So a bit of a weird goal to concede there off the corner kick, uh, but we keep going one more chance here before half time. Maybe Martinelli, is this your chance? Not first time, maybe second time surely? I cannot believe it, Martinelli you have to score there. He's now starting to cost us quite a few big chances and possibly quite a few points as well. Um, so he needs to take them chances, man. He still haven't scored a single goal for us. Uh, but sometimes, you know, he has his performances. I subbed him out though, Reese Nelson in. Pepe here with a chance, but the touch is a bit uh, too, uh, too heavy. And uh, if that was a bit better, uh, easily could have been a goal. But very, very bad heavy touch there. And... Uh, uh, yeah, Silas and the keeper of Liverpool gets uh, gets full control of it. I'm not too sure why he is standing in goal instead of Allison, but uh, he's done a very good job uh, so far for them. So uh, yeah, we have not been able to uh, to really create a proper uh, proper chance on goal. Uh, so we'll see if we can do something here now. At the end of the match, 90 minutes have gone. This is the last chance we might have at something. Özil now on the ball. He keeps going with his right foot, and it's over the goal, and we lose the game. Salah gives Liverpool all three points and that is also our first loss of the season and uh, yeah that is uh, that is not a good loss to take especially considering we did have chances we just couldn't hit the target and um, yeah we, we should have uh, we should have done better on a couple of situations especially uh, Pepe there and Martinelli but yeah we, uh, we go down to seventh place right now Liverpool is uh, off to first place and uh, the next one is going to be an away game against the Lokomotiv so Hopefully we can bounce back here and um, you know get get three points in this competition. Uh, we need that as well. Of course, we did play uh, a draw against Napoli. So if you want to have any chance of uh, making it out of the group stages, uh, we have to win this game. But yeah, that was our first loss, and um, hopefully it's uh, not gonna affect us too bad. Obviously, did come against one of the strongest teams. So um, yeah, I guess it, it's worse teams to lose for uh, than Liverpool. But uh, here we go, Martinelli. Now surely this could be his first goal for Arsenal. He is completely through here. He shoots. And what is that shot with his left foot as well? Straight at the keeper, one of the worst finishes I've ever seen. Um, so I'm starting to really worry that we didn't invest in uh, in a proper left winger, Lemar or something, in the transfer window because now we might have to wait a few months until we can uh, buy someone again. Uh, so now look at this space, completely uh, open here. Uh, we find Aubameyang to Pepe and Pepe is going to score it. 86 minutes and that is a very, very important goal. This could be three huge points for us in the group. And uh, yeah, we are just running down uh, to the manager and uh, just going crazy. Everybody is joining in on this celebration. The club officials, the uh, uh, the staff, everyone, everyone is joining that one because that is an important goal for us. If this game ended up as a draw, then I'm not too sure uh, how we would have continued. I don't think we would have even had a chance in uh, the group as well. But uh, yeah, he took his time there, uh, adjusted his position, and uh, Pepe is uh, clinical as usual and gets his goal. He's been uh, probably our player of the season so far. I'm, I'm sure that's uh, fair to say. 7.5 rating for him as well and that takes us up to second place. Napoli, they actually lost against Celtic. So Celtic is the team uh, that is the, the one to look out for in this uh, in this group stages. Um, so Napoli as well, that is uh, that is a loss for them. That is very surprising. Uh, some of our players have made good progress as well. Bellerin uh, won a new rating as well. Pepe as well is now an 85 rated. So so I like to see that uh, some of our best players is making good progress and we obviously got a win bonus there as well from the Champions League which we adjusted earlier that all of the prize bonuses go straight into the transfer budget uh, so we'll have a bit more spend to players and obviously uh, we probably might have to uh, look to a uh, getting a new left winger um, so away game to Brighton this one didn't go too well in real life but Pepe is there he chips it and he keeps his goal scoring form up he's now scoring in almost every single game the celebration is there as 
as well and that chip was absolutely beautiful very calm and uh, he's got ice in his veins look at this guys and uh, nice of him to uh, get the ball as well and I mean I, I just absolutely love that chip that looks so casual and uh, Pepe now uh, with the first goal he also gets another chance there at his second but uh, this one as well hits the crossbar. I think that's like his uh, second or third time it's hit the crossbar now from a free kick. Um, so it's been a while since we've scored one. But we did get the three points as well. Good save there by Leno towards the end. And uh, this is starting to look better now. Two wins in a row against the uh, uh, Lokomotiv. And now another away win against the Brighton. So that puts us up to fifth place above Manchester United. And Tottenham as well up to eighth place. Next game is going to be in the FA Cup. And the squad is going to be a very rotated for this cup game. Uh, I'm gonna have a few senior players in the starting 11, like um, obviously Urso is gonna play. Uh, I think I might have, uh, you know, Kier as well. We'll, we'll start obviously and Leno uh, will be in goal, but I'm gonna rotate a lot. We're gonna have, uh, you know, Reese Nelson. We're gonna have Sokka. We're gonna have, um, you know, just uh, just a lot of youngsters basically getting the chance here because I, I have a good feeling uh, that we'll do pretty well in this match and we can obviously as well, um, you know, sub in some good players off the bench. Uh, nice interception here by Torreira and somehow he almost uh, wins the header there. Uh, Ersin out to Martinelli. I noticed that Reese Nelson was quite open there and he goes for the volley first time and he hits the crossbar. That would have been our goal of the season. Very nice, uh, very nice vision there by Martinelli as well. Good ball and literally first time volley. He, the keeper just didn't expect that at all and that could have been a uh, goal of the air right there. So that was very close. Nice cross there by Tierney. That's one of his first games for us as well, and uh, almost early there uh, with the head. But as you guys can see, it actually ended up getting into extra time, and I subbed in the big boys. We got a bombing into the team, and Saka as well uh, gets the goal there after 102 minutes. Uh, thankfully, Aubameyang was on the pitch, and he uh, made a very nice assist there. Uh, Saka, though, just absolutely smashes that in. So that is his, obviously his first game uh, for Saka that's actually played, and he's already scored more uh, than Martinelli, so I might have to... And maybe give Saka another chance uh, if he keeps uh, doing this because it is very positive. Here we go, another good ball there though by Saka. This could be an assist as well. Aubameyang is there and he makes it 2 0. That is game over. It's a goal and an assist for Saka, which means that uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give him a match in the next game uh, in the Premier League because uh, he he was really really good in this one. One goal, one assist, and a bombing here of course. One on one, he is uh, almost never going to miss this. It's almost a certain goal, and that goal looks very easy, but it, it is indeed very difficult to score. And uh, that is indeed us through to the next round. Um, so it, uh, it almost ended up getting uh, going a bit bad there, because obviously uh, it ended up in extra time. But I, I just subbed in some uh, some, some really uh, senior players, Pepe, Aubameyang, uh, when the extra time started. And yeah, nothing and Forrest couldn't do anything about that. So uh, here we have the teams that went through. Doesn't really look like any big surprises to me. All of the big teams have uh, uh, basically made it. So now we have a home game against Celtic. And we know Celtic, they have won their opening two games against the Locomotive and also Napoli. I think they actually beat Napoli away 2-0. So this is a very tough one. And um, yeah, so uh, we might be including as well uh, Reese Nelson in the starting 11. We're definitely going to give Sokka though a start in this match. See what he can do uh, against Celtic because he was unbelievable for us uh, in that FA Cup game and saved us uh, from a very embarrassing defeat. Um, so here is the Celtics starting 11. They seem to be going for a 3-5-2 formation. Could also be a 5 at the back formation if they drop, uh, drop back quite a bit there. Uh, that's usually how it is with 3-5-2 formations. It's usually a 5 at the back so uh, it is going to be a defensive game. Ursula, like, very nice control and look at that ball. It's gone through to a bomb young. Uh, the Celtic defender there, I think it was Ayer couldn't do anything about that ball. And that is probably our best assist of the season. You know, when Ursula is on the ball, things like this can happen. He is one of the best playmakers in the world. And that was absolutely unbelievable to even find Aubameyang there on that run. That is exactly what I tried for. And Ursil made it happen. And once again, here he is as well. Good control of the ball. Uh, impossible to get it off him. So Ursil, uh, also one of our best players this season. Plays a nice one-two ball here. Uh, out and out to Bellerin. It's going to cross it into Aubameyang. And that's a goal. I think it's going to be an own goal actually. Uh, maybe Aubameyang could have forgot the credit for that one because I think Aubameyang heads it down and then hits uh, this guy's head so uh, it's classified as a known goal but we're gonna give this one to Aubameyang uh, and also nice cross again by Bellerin. Bellerin is actually starting to get quite a few assists I think that is his third assist or something of the season so uh, that's amazing but look at that look at that free kick from like 30 yards out 
absolutely unbelievable strike, one of the craziest free kicks I've seen. And out of nothing, Celtic is back in this tie with Griffiths there. And that the power behind that free kick, Leno had absolutely no chance. Let's take a look at that again. Uh, yeah, absolutely no chance right there for him. That is absolutely world class. And uh, uh, yeah, I just respect that goal to be honest. Uh, Griffiths here, Celtic come again though. Uh, Torreira does not get the second ball. Eduardo is on the ball back to Rogic who smashes it in top ins. And Celtic has come back into the game. In just like one minute, they've turned it around. And now it's 2 2. They've scored two goals really quickly right there. And what a game this is turning out to be. Let's have a look at the replay here. Uh, nice football. Pretty sloppy defending by us. And uh, yeah, Leno uh, couldn't do much there either. His view was also pretty blocked there from uh, David Luiz. But David Luiz with a nice three ball sees the run there of Aubameyang. And Aubameyang is going to score that. What is going on? Uh, Aubameyang literally passed the ball, went for a crazy run, maybe that's a tactic we've been working on the training ground or something. But that ball from David Luiz though, absolutely beautiful weight on that pass. And Aubameyang, nice touch, good finish with his left foot. And that is gonna give us the win. So what a game this was, by far the most entertaining Champions League game. Uh, of the season so far and we actually beat the uh, group leaders as well which means I think we will uh, take the first uh, spot at the moment. Aubameyang their man of the match he actually technically got a hat-trick in that game so thankfully uh, Aubameyang still uh, indeed plays for us uh, but yeah we have the seven points right there two wins one draw Celtic second and Napoli is last it looks like Napoli might have lost again against Lokomotiv Tottenham is also last in their group so Things are crazy at the moment, but only three games have been played, so everything can still happen. But uh, some weird results going on in the Champions League. Napoli, I thought uh, they would be the best team in our group and obviously get to the first spot and everything and literally win every single game. But they've lost every single game so far, so uh, that is very surprising. Maybe Arsenal and maybe even Celtic as well is going to make it out of the group stages, which will be uh, very interesting. Nicolas Pepe has a brand new nickname from the fans. They have started to call him The Terrible. I think it's Susan. Him. I, I'm not too sure um, what that really means. Is this an English thing or something? Because terrible, I don't, I don't think that's a good nickname. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's like a uh, um, English nickname or something. Because uh, to me, that doesn't sound very good. Uh, the fans, they're calling him terrible. So, I don't really know. I didn't really understand that. But... Um, yeah, they're giving nicknames to the players now as well. Uh, it's gonna be another start for Martinell in this game. Can he finally get his first goal for us? I really hope so, because he's not gonna get many more chances if he doesn't perform in this match. And then I'm definitely looking to uh, bring in someone there on the left. Kolasinac there with a nice back heel pass to Aubameyang, who finds Martinelli. Martinelli keeps going back to Aubameyang here, and it goes straight at the goalkeeper. And as you guys can see there on the clock, it's already 90 minutes, which means this has been another disastrous performance. We win the ball here though after the keeper's goal kick. Uh, can we do something? Ursel is through, he should score there. And he doesn't straight at the keeper. What a save, I mean what a bad shot that was. That could have given us all the three points, but it ends up being another draw. It's another very disappointing draw as well at home. And uh, these are games that we should be winning. I cannot believe that we're, we're, we're really like beating. We're doing well against the good teams, but we're not doing good. We're not consistent enough against uh, the lower teams. So, very frustrating. We are still fifth in the table, which isn't bad. Uh, but now we have to win this game against Watford. So, um, yeah, there's a few positives in this season. But one of the biggest negatives is that, uh, yeah, we need, to be, we need to be more consistent. Like, this is crazy. We can literally go from having an amazing game to playing awful the next game. Um, so yeah, we, we, we have to work on that uh, to be honest, but uh, here we go another chance to redeem ourselves against the Watford Beautiful run there by Pepe, uh, but the keeper saves it. Not a very good finish, but Pepe showing what he can do right there uh, Here come Watford though right before halftime. Delefeu is a dangerous player And that goes in. Leno cannot reach it and Delefeu has made it 1-0 to Watford against the Arsenal and he has celebrates and everything and uh, Maradona, I mean myself, I'm very, very frustrated with that. That is not how we wanted to start this game. And uh, yeah, good shot. Maybe Kier could have done a bit better there as well. But uh, I'm not going to blame Kier. He's been amazing for us. And uh, that was just a very good shot. And uh, uh, yeah, the keeper couldn't do much. A bombing note to, to Martinelli. Martinelli, come on, you have to save us. This is your chance. And he scores it again. I mean, how many more chances are we going to give Martinelli now? 
Um, I'm not too sure guys, this is absolutely crazy. Could have easily scored there, another chance here though to Ursil. Gets a bit of a bad touch there though. A uh, couple of fake shots, we bring it to Cedric, to Pepe with the curler. And uh, no, that is not gonna be enough. Pepe goes down to the ground. He probably knows it is over and I can already imagine the Arsenal fan TV meltdown after this performance because now in the league we haven't really had a good performance in a while and obviously the last game was a draw I'm, I cannot believe this they're dancing they're literally dancing to us and they're even talking to each other like probably bantering us and everything I cannot believe this guys absolutely disaster and um, yeah this is a game we had to take three points we now drop down to ninth I mean it's still not too many points up to like third spot fourth spot but um, yeah, that, that is a game we have to win. I mean, we should be winning these games and the next game is gonna be against Spurs as well. This is, this is probably the most important game of the season. If we want to have any hope for challenging uh, at the title, we have to win this game against Spurs. Uh, I mean, even for top four, we have to, we have to win this game if we want to have a chance. So, uh, this is gonna be very, very special and very important. Uh, derbies are special occasions in football and uh, the players are super motivated. Um, so, obviously, even though we have had a few uh, bad results recently in the league uh, derbies are very special and hopefully we can turn up for this one get those three points uh, beat our arrivals in the north the london derby and get the three points which would be very very important as well uh, for us in the league so uh, obviously we have a bit of a dilemma here as well we have a uh, thomas lamar and coutinho those are the two players i have chosen now let me know right now in the comment section down below which players should we be moving for in the January chance window because I have to sign one more left winger if you guys have any other suggestions maybe any other left wingers let me know down below uh, but I'm thinking either Lamar or Coutinho so obviously Lamar he could be a bit injury prone he's not really um, done really anything for Atletico Madrid and I feel like he could uh, fit in pretty well at the Arsenal he's obviously French as well so um, the French connection up there would be pretty great Coutinho as well could also fit in pretty well obviously he's not uh, had a very good season at the Bayern or Barcelona recently so maybe he can revive his career uh, at Arsenal but let me know down below what do you guys think who should be signed in the next one that is all for now though thank you guys so much for watching this episode I'm probably gonna have like another 20 games in the next one so uh, thank you guys so much for watching drop a like if you want to see part two and uh, yeah I'll see you next time thank you so much for watching peace out